My name's John. I work with Biamp as a, an applications engineer. Okay, so what we're going to cover today is this agenda. These are the things we're going to cover. Uh, why, are, why are we doing Warehouse Designer as a web application? What are some of the standard things to this challenge of doing very, very large spaces? How has the industry handled this so far from a design standpoint? Uh, then we're going to talk about Warehouse Designer, how it works, features and benefits, what all the buttons do. And we'll talk a little bit about what it doesn't do because it is not a replete modeling system. It is not Ease 6 or something like that. It is not a, a modeling or drafting platform. It is a web-based calculator. So go over some of the limits. Um, and then maybe discuss, which goes back to that last poll question, what are some of the other places you think you might be able to use this application or something very similar to it? Okay, so why, why are we doing software other than keeping the software engineers busy, giving them something to work on? Uh, why, why does a company like Biam go out of its way to put a team of people together and develop something and, and not charge anything for it? So obviously we're trying to promote our products into a particular market, right? But we've run into over the past several years, a growing, an unbelievably uh, quickly growing market where uh, gosh, five years ago, we would get a large warehouse project come in for some design support a few times a year, perhaps. And over the past few years, it's more like uh, at least a couple of months come through, if not more. So it's really ramped up tremendously. The move to distribution center type online retail and, and things like that have been big factors in, in uh, this market and things related to it. Um, so we started running into the problem of trying to do very large spaces quickly, and it was very challenging, been very time consuming, honestly, still is in, in some ways. So we wanna help solve these design problems, do them quickly, get better results, hopefully, get to the point where we have a quotation and proposal faster, and give more people access to being able to do design. These are giant spaces. Here's one that, that I've worked on that's in our region. Uh, it's large enough you could you could set up and have a race. You can put cars in there and have a race car race. I mean, it's enormous. You could fly model airplanes through it. You know, it's 50 feet tall, it's 1,000 feet long, 500 feet wide, and, and then different kinds of things will go in here, furniture that's shelving or um, material handling equipment, workstations and things. Uh, but it's all in this big container, which starts to present a very unique challenge. That large photo there with the yellow posts, that one has an 11 second decay time. So you can go in there, clap your hands, count to 11, <laughs> and then clap your hands again. It's very difficult, some of these spaces. Uh, we usually need a lot of speakers. And when we need a lot of speakers, that takes more time to enter into the modeling system when we're trying to do a layout and get to good answers. All of the spaces inside the warehouse are what we call adjoined acoustic spaces. Uh, they're acoustically a little different. So the racking area or a production area or even mezzanines, they're, they're all a little bit different and they interact with each other to some degree. The sound you make in one area bleeds into the adjacent area, right? So we need to be able to accommodate the individual needs of the areas and, uh, and not interfere with the adjacent area. So, uh, and, you, and you can even have enclosed spaces inside of some of these distribution centers. They'll have maybe a cold storage area, which is all walled off and separated as an acoustic space from the rest of the building. So it's a bunch of rooms in a way inside of a giant room and they all touch each other. And that's part of what makes it tricky. Conventional modeling can give us really precise answers, but it's slow, honestly. It's, it's literally one speaker at a time, placing them, aiming them, copy them, paste them, put another in. Uh, some of the programs have a limit where like it needs focus, we have a limit at 40 sound sources, so a really large space. We can't even complete a full design. We have to handle the room in pieces. 
And uh, so that's sort of a limitation. And that's an awful lot of work because you might lay them out once, run the mapping, see the result and realize, oh, I need to modify this some. So you go and you have to go back through it and work on every speaker one at a time, one at a time. So it's a slow process. And you're just perhaps just trying to get to an estimate. You're just trying to get past the first step of you've, you've done some discovery, you've done some pre-qualifying, you just need to be able to scale. Is this a $10,000 problem, a $100,000 problem, or a million dollar problem and help the owner make some choices? So that's the slow way to do it. You can move faster in programs like EVAC and Address because they automate the layout, but they only, for the most part, EVAC does let you aim things horizontally and sideways and all. They all, they all work with the speakers aimed down, which may not be the best way to orient them to get the best coverage out of them, get the best intelligibility, um, but it's fast. So it, you know, in a way, what we wanted was, can we have focus and address together? You know, can we have those kinds of feature sets uh, in terms of how the speakers are aimed and managed and but still rapidly get to some answers, right? Uh, the standard responses so far from the industry uh, aren't software driven at all. They're basically application guides or little booklets on how to do warehouses. And I've read all of them, gone through them in detail, tried to follow some of the math that's presented, built models to simulate that math. And um, they only work really well in a few very narrow conditions when noise levels are low and maybe in the racking system, uh, the shelving areas where, where reverberation times are lower, they can work. But for the most part, a lot of these design guides don't cover all of the fundamental things that we need to cover when we do a sound system design. I mean, all kinds of stuff that I've listed over here about sound pressure and overlap between speakers and 6 dB down points and polar patterns, and, and no one ever talks about intelligibility. But these all matter to getting a system to work well. So that, that's where everyone's been so far, sort of using this as a guideline and then trying to use a program that doesn't really do anything that's in the, in the design guide. <laughs> uh, or you're doing it very kind of in a very slow fashion, one device at a time. So that's where, that's where we've been as an industry, trying to help this part of the, uh, uh, the market. So what does the solution and warehouse designer do? So it's a web application. It's software, but it runs on a server and you interface with it uh, through, uh, through the web browser. And it considers all of the things listed there, which aren't considered entirely by some of the other mapping programs that have some automation built in. We're doing a lot of different things all at the same time. The user only needs to put in basic site survey level information, which I think is very helpful in that if you're not comfortable with modeling programs, or maybe that's just not part of your job at all, you could use this using some basic things that you would collect walking through a site with the owner or architect or just going through their prints and, and develop a believable solution. So you would need the architectural dimensions. That's pretty normal and easy to, to acquire, whether you get a laser tape measure and do it yourself or whether you use a, a, a plan drawing like this and start marking off dimensions. You need to have uh, an idea of what the interior finishes are. We, we know that most of the time what they are, you just need to confirm them. And you need to know the clear height. That is, how much clearance do you have uh, for the um, uh, for the, the loudspeaker position. I'll show you that in a second. And at, at a site that exists and is up and running and functional, you would want to collect noise condition information with a basic sound meter. So you could be this guy with his NTI going around, taking some basic DBA measurements, nothing sophisticated, and uh, take note of the, the blue posts but it's not always blue, but in this case, they're blue. That's the, the height of the racks and the clear height, which would be take a look at where the lighting is and the, the ductwork 
and there's going to be a spec usually from the architect indicate this is the maximum or the minimum height that you have to, to reach just for clearance so that equipment being moved around doesn't hit your speaker or your light or whatever. And then learn what they're expecting. Is this a paging system? Is this a music system, like a background music system? Does it do both? Do you need to cover every square inch of the place? Or do you just need to cover workstations? That kind of thing. So that the calculator, based on that basic information, is going to return to you an estimated design. It's based on your site survey info. And pretty quickly, within literally minutes, I mean, you'll probably spend more time taking measurements on the PDF than getting an answer out of the program. Very quickly, you'll have a solution to consider. You may find that sometimes you'll need to go a little deeper and get out one of your other simulators uh, and, and look closer to solve problems. That's normal. This doesn't replace that. But it might get you to a really good starting point, which is what we're going for. If we can get you all the way to the end on the design, fantastic. If we can get you 80% of the way there, or at least give you a really good launching off point to know where to even try to start, we, we hope that that's what we're accomplishing. Now, here's an example of what one looks like, um, actually the standard one. If, uh, as you see, when we, we go through the tutorial part, you can build a warehouse knowing nothing and putting in no information and get this one. So it'll even give you an answer even if you don't have anything to put in. Maybe you just want to show the owner, we have a tool to help do this better. And there you go. You can, you can click through all of the uh, steps of the tutorial of the, of the, uh, the wizard and, and get to here. So. All right, so where do you get the software? How do you get to this starting point? This is what it looks like when, when we launch. There's three ways to get there. You can go to the BIAMP website, click on support, go to the cornerstone area. That's where all the, the knowledge base resources are. The bottom of the page, there's a thing called design tools, this little green box. And I think uh, this, this is in the links, right? Avery, you, this one's included, right? In the yeah, that's correct. Uh, in in the, uh, the chat, we should have all the, uh, the links. So you don't have to go navigate all of these. You can just go to the go to the chat there and click on these, and then it'll open them. Uh, and here's the full URL if you wanted to, to write that down. But anyway, there's a few ways to get started with it, or to get to it. All right. All right. So what what can we do in Warehouse Designer that's different or special? Uh, and what's it look like? How do, how do I interact with it? If you've used BIAMP's conference room or classroom designer, it's going to look very similar to that. In both of those programs, you have a plan view of the room. Can you see my mouse okay? Is that coming across? Yeah, we should, yeah, I think we can. Okay. yeah, good. So on the left side, the basic layout is you see a floor plan of the space you're working on. And then to the right of that is a set of controls that you can adjust to modify the design. In conference room designer, you're changing the dimensions of the room, the furniture, placing speakers and microphones. And then in classroom designer, kind of the same thing, but more, more tools there to move around different kinds of desks and tables, excuse me, and so forth. In Warehouse Designer, basically the same layout. It should look very similar. You'll have the floor plan, which we'll show you in a minute how to build a floor plan. And then after you've built the floor plan on the right side, you have uh, a bunch of controls, these little menus that open to modify the design. So it'll produce a first draft design, and you can decide if you're satisfied. If you're not, you can go in here and modify some things to, uh, to see if it comes up with better answers for whatever it is you're concerned about. Uh, each area in here uh, that's identified in a dashed line, it becomes a tab in the interface. So each one of these is a tab. And uh, we select them one at a time and, and make modifications. 
the the layout once you get your first pass or make any adjustments will default to giving you the direct sound pressure level and it'll map it and show you a color gradient here indicating the uh, the change in sound pressure across the space okay so that's what the sound level is directly from the speaker to the listener without showing any of the reflected sound energy or its or its effects and then you can also map speech transmission index which includes noise and masking effects so this is looking at all of those acoustic things about the room what's it made of what are the surfaces what's the floor and the ceiling made of is there racking or other equipment in the area and it's giving you a speech transmission index result to help score uh, speech intelligibility it's one thing to get sound to the people it's another thing for them to understand it and that's what sti helps us to gauge the uh, the mappings show up, but then there's also uh, a list of uh, bills of materials or equipment lists, right? The, the software will select automatically and suggest a particular loudspeaker, the model, location, quantity, how it's positioned and aimed. It'll tell you what transformer tap is necessary to get the sound levels that are mapped. Uh, so you can pretty quickly get uh, total amplifier power calculated and include that in your quotation all right if there's some aspect of the outcomes that you're not satisfied with you want to improve it or change it just because of some preferences uh, again i mentioned that you can open the menus on the side there and adjust the floor plan alter what are the acoustics alter what your priorities are for the sound system and you'll notice for the most part here, we're not asking you expert audio questions. We're just asking you, what do you want the thing to do, right? And the, the most we need to know is roughly how loud is the area that you'll be working in it. Do you want paging or music? And what part of the room do you want to cover? And that's really about it. Uh, what's your budget? So it's pretty quick to adjust if you want to adjust it. The basic uh, equipment list can be expanded to show you all of the details for every device in the system. So that, that's a bonus for the, uh, the people who have to execute the installation when you get to that point. Which speaker models are included? Uh, so currently it's not the whole catalog. Uh, takes a long time to run these computations. So we've focused on things that are really particular for this market. And we've focused on models that are available uh, worldwide. Uh, some of the ones here at the top, the H10, 20, and 30, and the MPL62, the, the four at the top, those were recently made available in North America. They were not available prior to 2023, I believe in the spring these became available. Uh, so these are the models available, some compact R series and then these horns. These are all horn loaded products, which matters. In a noisy environment, a reflective environment, having the added directivity of a horn helps focus sound and reduce some of the effects of reverberation and noise. And so generally they're clearer. So these are all horn loaded products. Okay, so let's get into the software, look at the tutorial, what do all the buttons do? And there's a tutorial built in, should you wanna review any of this? There's a couple ways to get to that. The first time you launch Warehouse Designer from your web browser, and it's basically built for Edge and um, Chrome. It definitely conforms with those two. I've run it in Firefox, uh, run it in Safari, not, not too buggy there, but those aren't the ones that we're primarily supporting. We're not not supporting, but you'll find Edge and Chrome are the, the best ones. And anyway, the first time you open the application, the web application, you'll get the welcome screen and you'll get the tutorial. 
And so it's an embedded YouTube video. Uh, you can watch that, skip through it. There's some chapter markers so you can get to the parts that you want to understand better or review. You can go to the um, BIAMP YouTube channel and find it there. It's posted there. Uh, inside the software, after you've watched it once and you've started working on designs, there is a question mark in the top right corner, and that'll launch the YouTube page. So there's a few ways to get back to the tutorial. That tutorial will go through basically a step-by-step -step follow the bouncing ball method to get started, load in the parameters of a room, modify it, and get a mapping. So these are these are the steps that it'll go through. We'll do that together in a moment. And at the end, it'll show you how to uh, collect a URL. That's how we save the files and export a PDF. Okay, we'll hold this for the moment and I'm going to switch now. Let's see if Windows will behave here. I want to go into my browser and show you system. There we go. Okay, so earlier, if you're if you want to get a copy of this open, I showed you that you would go to the BIAMP page, go to Cornerstone, and at the bottom is the design tools, which would take you here, and there's Warehouse Designer, along with a bunch of other very helpful calculators for all kinds of things. And when it launches, it looks like this. So we'll, we'll do one together real quickly. I'm going to put in the project. Uh, what do we want to call this? My first warehouse. How's that? Company name, I am, and my name is John. These these cells, you can you can skip them technically, but they will go into your um, they will go into your automated report at the end. Okay. All right. So we'll begin that. The parameters of the room get loaded in here through a system of what are called modals, or you might call it a wizard. This little screen can move around to some degree to help you see what's going on behind it. This red box is the floor plan. And right now dimensioned 600 by 300, that's some, there's a bunch of default values in here. This is the starting point. Obviously you can type in whatever values you have for your room. And then you tell it which parts of the perimeter have loading docks. This is important because it'll go ahead and put in a travel lane and you can tell it how big is the travel lane to go with those loading docks. So we can just leave the default one up here for now. Okay. And then we move on to the next architectural information it needs. Well, we have a floor plan. We need to know how tall is the room. And which way does the roof slope? So it defaults to a low grade or a, a low rake roof, um, and it uses the short dimension for starters. It, you could make it go the other way. You can you can slope the roof whichever way is appropriate. You can put in a peaked roof, and then put in the values for how high is the center and the edges of the of the building. So the center line and then the perimeter. Uh, on the sloped roof, same thing, you're putting in the low end and the high end. What are those dimensions? And this dimension, I should point out, is for the ceiling surface, not the trusses or any structure below it. Where is the ceiling surface? Because we want to know how big is the room by air volume. And then uh, we pretty much already know what to expect are the materials. We're using that for the acoustics. The roof grid lets you put in basically a graph paper type grid and uh, lock the speaker positions to that grid if that would be important to you. So let's say you had some sort of grid in here. It was 50 feet by 25 feet, whatever the intervals would be for the uh, trusses in both directions. Uh, and you can offset that. You can You can tell it to start at zero, which is the left side, or to start a little bit further. All the dimensions are anchored to this top left corner. 
as you can see your origin marker there. Okay, so now we have a floor plan. We have the uh, truck bays and we have a roof and a grid. Even if you turn the grid on here, you later have the option whether to use it or not. So if you just want it for visual representation, you can put it here. Then it will start to populate areas. It'll start with filling all of the available space that wasn't already consumed by the traffic areas. And that's the default numbers it'll put in for the next step. And, uh, and that could be your whole warehouse. You could just keep clicking through and it'll make a warehouse. But I'm gonna divide this a little bit smaller. I'm gonna make this 300 feet by 300 feet. And you see the red dash line now is not the full remaining space, but just a portion of it. The origin is 32 feet zero, which means it's come 32 feet off the top left corner and zero off the top line. That's the starting point. So in each time you enter an area, it's at this top left corner. That's the origin for the area relative to the origin of the room. Then we can tell it, do we want to adjust the speakers to match the roof grid or not? That's an option. And it will automatically presume a certain height truss below the ceiling. If these numbers aren't exactly right, you can change that. This is where you would put in your clear height. So the low number should at least be the clear height, whatever that clearance requirement is for forklifts and equipment to operate without hitting any of the trades overhead. We'll come back to surrounding walls on the, the next one. Okay, so I'm going to hit continue. And now it's going to ask me what's in the area? What kind of equipment or furniture is in there? We've got five choices. We can have pallet racks. We can have automated material handling, manual material handling, pallet staging. Move this so you can read it. And it can be a traffic area. So I'm going to start with shelving. So I'm going to put in the shelving slide this out of the way a little and then I'm going to tell it what is the upright height what is the height of the posts uh, the support posts for the shelving and it will not let you put in posts that are higher than your clearance height that's obviously important that we don't have shelves that are higher than the lights and the speakers so put in an upright height we can then adjust whether the shelves go one direction or the other we can load the number of aisles, two kinds of aisles here. And we're, we're all gonna learn a little bit of warehouse jargon today. Uh, picking aisles are the aisles you walk up and down at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or Costco to, to, to pick things, select things. So that would be the smaller aisles. The primary aisles are the ones that connect all the picking aisles to the rest of the building. And in here, this graphic is actually scaled according to standard sizes for shelving systems that fit conventional pallets. So you don't have to know too much about that. You just need to count the number of aisles. So that would be something to get off of the prints, or maybe when you're doing your walkthrough, you count how many aisles are in zone and load that in here. Okay, and then the number of connecting aisles between them, or primary aisles. Moving right along, next thing it needs to know is how loud is it in that area? So if you took a measurement, use that number, put the exact number in if you'd like. If you don't know, you can take a best guess and use one of these buttons and in five decibel increments, it'll load a DBA value. So just, it's available to you. It's just a suggested number, doesn't mean anything. A measured number is best if you have it. Then you're gonna tell it, where do you want the speakers? Do we wanna cover the picking aisles, the small aisles, or do we wanna cover the, the bigger aisles? In this case, we're going left and right. All right, we can pick either one. Or we can ask for general coverage. You just cover the whole area, sort of irrespective of where the racks are. And sometimes you have to do that. In fact, sometimes it might be, might be smart to do that. A lot of these distribution centers, as I've learned, change their racking system, change their whole floor plan, more frequently than you might believe, maybe annually or every few years. 
So they may ask for, please just give me general coverage because I really don't know where the furniture is going to be next year. Just cover everything. Don't get too specific. So that's a choice. And then we need to tell it, what are we doing with the sound? Is it a paging only or is it paging plus music? I'm going to presume that in the aisles, uh, the picking aisles, it may not be a music oriented event because uh, the fellow on the forklift may not really care about that. He may just want to know that there's something important going on. So let's use paging. If I'm done my design, like if that's all I need to draw, then I can turn off this switch to add another area or I can continue and put in more. So let's put in one, one or two more. I'll put in another one here that's 150 feet. You'll notice that the origin's already marked for you moving left to right. So that's a good way to work as you take your takeoffs, move left to right and, and just place them one at a time. And the second area, we're gonna call this cold storage, okay? And I see the dash line here. Um, I'm going to uh, close the ceiling. I'm going to lower the ceiling. I got to change the mounting height now. It'll make sure you're putting in invalid numbers. And I'm going to put walls around it because this is an, a room within a room, essentially. So these walls I can close off, go to the next area, and maybe it's still a, a storage with racking system, but it's all cold storage. Uh, probably need to adjust my aisles just a little bit, try to get them lined up, maybe, maybe turn them the other direction. There we go. Okay, so that you, know, you can get in and out. All right, so now that's an enclosed area, and the the software will treat this as its own acoustic space separate from the rest of the building. All right, so what's going on in this area? Well, we're, it's cold storage, there's a lot of air handling, so I'm gonna use a high noise number. I'm gonna cover just the primary aisles and I only care about paging, perhaps in this case. Right. And the last area, we'll just leave this sort of open. We'll use the, the remaining available space in it uh, it's already oriented it to the, the right starting point at 482 feet over here at this corner. I'll ask it to snap to the grid. I'm not going to close the walls. It's already closed on one side. And we're going to call that pallet staging. Okay. I probably should have put some docks on this side so the pallets have somewhere to go. In any event, so there's, there we'll call it pallet staging. And then we'll continue. Uh, not as noisy of an area. We'll do general coverage. And here I'll do paging and music because perhaps more time is spent there by occupants. Now you'll see that the add an area button is gone because there's no more space left to use inside of the total envelope of the room. We'll hit continue to warehouse and sit back a moment while it runs the calculation. So right now it's looking at all the models that we talked about, all the different products available and sorting what are the best options for each of the areas. And then this is the result it provides. So the direct sound level is mapped for the whole building. You can reference that to the color bar at the bottom. You also have some new things that have popped up on the left of your screen. We have a measurement tool, so you can go in here and click and drag and see how far apart certain things are in the space. Maybe you want to see how far it is from this speaker to that speaker. And it's uh, about 100 feet right between them. So that's handy. The next button is a mouse over the speaker tool. You click this, run your mouse over to a given speaker, rest it there, and it'll tell you some basic details about what model is it, where is it located, what's the aiming angle. We can go around and see any of the devices here. There's a little arrow next to each speaker to indicate which way it's pointing, uh, which way it's aimed horizontally. All right. And the third button is uh, for showing the sound level or the plotted level, because it'll, it'll do this with STI also, where your mouse is. So now you can put the mouse anywhere in the mapped areas 
and get the SPL number for that position. There's an equipment list on the right side you might notice and some other mappings. So if I wanna see what the STI came out to be for each of these, there's the STI numbers. I can run my mouse around and see what it came up with for those areas, okay? And then an equipment list. So this is a total equipment list for the entire building. Uh, sort of a, a total roll up, if you will. This is helpful if you just quickly need to get some numbers into a quote and get a rough order magnitude. So in the time that it took to do that and do some takeoffs, you would have right now a starting point design and you can go put that into your quotation software get some numbers and start getting a sense of where you are on budget and then make some changes if you need to. But pretty quickly we're there, we have the design. I'm gonna go back to each of these tabs, select like one of these areas. We can directly go into any individual area and look at its coverage. We can look at any of the menu items on the right side and we could make changes. I'm going to go into the cold storage here and I'm going to check the acoustics. So what's what's already in here is uh, block walls and a metal deck, which means the ceiling is a steel ceiling. I'm going to change that to insulation battens. So I presume that there's some insulation at the roof, but acoustically it's exposed to the interior. And now it's rerun the mapping and you'll see the STI actually went up from 0.5 something to 0.6 so that was an improvement to the the uh, the numbers here and the equipment list I think it, it stayed on the same speaker anytime we make a change if it finds a better speaker to get answers it'll do that uh, or different positions whatever is necessary to get the best of the available choices. Uh, I've already got paging selected. Maybe I want to see, is there a cheaper option? I can choose a different budget here and it'll recalculate and see what did it come up with? Well, uh, see, oops, an equipment list, uh, went to a different product and a fewer, a lower number of them, okay? and the STI still remains uh, decently high, 0.57. So that's all right. That would work fine for that area. So you can continue to make iterative adjustments to your satisfaction here to get what you need for performance and price. And for any individual area, you not only have that equipment list that shows you the total for the area, but you can get the positioning details and all of the uh, specifics about that area. Uh, so each speaker is listed individually, its exact location, trim height, how it's aimed, and how many watts are needed for the tap that's being used. The equivalent gain relative to all the other speakers is indicated here. So you could actually use that for your amplifier setup. And we will, as you can see, uh, include delay as a choice, uh, probably in the near future. Uh, as delay alignments do help intelligibility. So that's, that's our range of choices for uh, how, to, how to map and adjust speakers in the model. Um, after you've gone through your areas and you've got everything about where you want it, uh, you can go back to the warehouse view and sort of see the, the forest for the trees and uh, run whatever mapping is interesting to you, the total SPL, direct SPL, STI. So that's the total sound with reflected and direct energy. The direct energy is what comes directly from the speaker to the listener without any of the reflected energy. And the STI is a calculation to estimate the how well you can understand it. Is it intelligible? Uh, so you can put up whatever mappings are interesting. And, and then you are basically done with your design and you've got two ways to preserve it. So the first one is the save button in the top right. You'll get this message that says this has been saved and it's in the URL. You'll see the URL now has a version equals zero 
at the top here of the screen. So I'm going to copy that. All right. Now, that's not what we wanted. Come on, Windows. Stay with us here. Copy. And well, actually, it's, it's already in the clipboard. I forgot that. <laughs> it's already in the clipboard. Hit OK. And I'm going to go over here to the uh, the chat and give everybody a, a copy of that design. So I'm going to hit Send. And so now you could click on the URL that's in the chat and see exactly what I see. So you could send this to a colleague or a client or anybody who's interested, right? Now, if you need to provide a report, oops, <laughs> look at that. I hit the wrong button. All right. Put the URL back in. Okay, we're back to where we were. Always important to save, right? It has to recalculate since I'm reloading it. That's fine. So now export is my next choice to produce a report. So it'll pop open another tab and produce a PDF with a summary detail of the whole space. What are the total devices, their types, and then details on each area, one area at a time. So you have uh, whatever level of detailed information is needed. Uh, the hyperlink is right there to get to the design. You could click that. It'll take you right back to the, the, uh, the address. Now you can save this PDF in Edge. I believe it's the same with the same thing going on in Chrome. There's a save button here that doesn't save it. And that, that's a that seems to be a limit in the way the browsers work, but you can print it to a PDF. So you click print. Here I'm using Bluebeam for PDFs. And I'm going to print this to a PDF. It will ask, you can't see this, let me move this. It will ask, where do you want to put this? So I'm going to save it to my desktop. It exports it to the desktop and opens up my PDF viewer. And ta-da, there we are. We have our, we have a, a file that we can pass along. So you can send that to your engineering, technician people who are going to take care of installing this. You can send it to your client, to prove that you did some homework for your quote, or right, whatever is whatever is useful. Okay. So you've completed a design, you saved it, you exported it, and we did that all in 15 minutes. I just made up some dimensions. I guess it would probably double my time if I needed to go measure these dimensions in a PDF and then load them one at a time and do that those steps. So half an hour, 45 minutes, I, I have a system. Now, there may be some aspects of this if I'm looking at the STI and realize yeah, some of this is a little bit low. Let's go look at that area. Palette staging, uh, numbers are, 0.45 is a little low. You tend to want to be above 0.5. So I might double check, make sure I have the right materials loaded. Uh, yeah, those are all the right materials. That's the right noise. You may choose to take that part of the building and go to your other modeling system and look at it a little closer, see if there's other choices. Can you optimize these speakers a little more on and on, whatever. But at least now I have an idea where should I probably place them? What kind of model speaker is a good choice? And, and I have a, a launching off point when I get into my other modeling system. All right. Any questions so far, Avery? Uh, it doesn't look like we have anything in the chat at the moment. We lull everybody to sleep already? Okay. So. Let's talk a little bit about some of the limitations because it is a web calculator. It's not a replete modeling suite, right? A um, couple things here. And, and then what do you do with those, those limits? Um, so one question that's come up several times is, can I raster a background image? Can I put an image in the background and, and, and show all of the, the floor plan elements and then put the model on top? This does not do that currently. You can do that in Focus, in EVAC and address. Uh, again, this is not a modeling system, it's a calculator. Uh, Multi-level areas uh, come up. You'll have places where 
uh, you'll have maybe a 50 foot tall building, but you may have one or more elevated area, one above the other. And here you could draw in the first floor level of that mezzanine type area or multi-level area, but the additional areas would need to be their own little uh, file all by themselves. We don't have a way to show levels on top of each other currently. A um, little bit of terminology just to kind of keep us on the same page a little bit. I've been saying areas and you might be thinking, is he talking about zones? I always call that zones. It's totally fine. You can use whatever vernacular is comfortable to you. We've decided to use areas because it relates to modeling systems. Anytime we draw audience areas, they're called areas. So we've stuck with that because they are acoustically distinguished spaces. They have dimensions and, and there's people there that are listening to the, the audio system. Zones is a term I, I like to leave for how we program the system to send signals to different amplifier channels, to different parts of the building. There's lots of ways to organize zones. In Bochia, we can have zones on top of zones and zones that become parts of other zones. That's its own discussion. And then we have loudspeaker zones, or what I would call amplification circuits. So you may have an area that's got a bunch of speakers in it, and you may not be able to drive them all with just one channel. You may need to use several channels. Those are amplification circuits or zones. So that's the terminology we're using here. Uh, if that works for you, great. If you prefer to use other terminology, that's fine, but just so you understand where we're coming from. I did mention earlier, and I'll show you an example here, uh, when you're doing your drafting or your, your loading in dimensions, always start top left. The reason is website pages start at the top and work your way down. Anyone who's done any other drafting knows that you start in the corner and work your way out uh, to the up, up to the right. And that's the way we learned to do it in math class in the Cartesian coordinate plane. Uh, the, the, the website, just the way web pages work, it's upside down. X is still to the right, but Y is going down. That's all. So start in the top left corner and grab your takeoffs to get the positions to know where is the starting position for a given area and then what are the dimensions of that area. So, for example, this racking system here is 120 feet from the starting point and 10 feet down. So that would be my origin for this racking system. And then I would put in the dimensions of the, the racking system and, and so forth. The acoustic conditions, while being as accurate as we can be, are estimated. We don't have a place where you enter reverberation times or enter specific interior surfaces. We're using generic absorption values for common building materials. There's not a lot of variety in building materials in distribution centers. It's all concrete, drywall, metal, things that are unkind to audio. <laughs> Sometimes you get some uh, fiberglass uh, insulation that helps, but for the most part, they're, they are what they are. Uh, when you put the noise in, you're just putting in a DBA number presently. Uh, other programs will use octave band or third octave band into it, so we're not doing that here. Each area is calculated individually, and I think you might have noticed on the display where the areas meet one another, they do not overlap their SPL. That's not blended together, at least not currently. So each area right now is calculating individually even though each area is aware of the total acoustics around it. It's not that it's self-aware, it's being considered in the calculation. Um, STI presently, in, in the way we're using it, uses the statistical format, not the ray tracing, if you know what that means. And um, it does include noise, it includes masking effects, if you understand what that means. This is kind of a, this would be its own lecture on how how does STI work, and I wouldn't be the one teaching it. Uh, but the uh, the, la the th one thing it is not including presently is to evaluate the effect of sound from other speakers affecting the area of an individual speaker's coverage and the time of flight and the signal delay that goes with it. That's not currently uh, included. But you did notice there's something in the chart called signal delay so maybe you have an idea of where we think we're going to have to go with that 
Uh, warehouse designer will return the best layout, even if the best possible intelligibility score is unavoidably low. Again, these are buildings built out of materials that are unkind to audio. I showed you a picture in the beginning of a room that was literally 11 seconds, and we struggled to get more than 0.35 to a lot of areas. I mean, really low numbers. Right under the speakers, we would get really high numbers, but adjacent areas would drop rapidly because of the acoustics. So these are tough, tough rooms sometimes. So you, so you might wind up with the least worst choice, and that's the good one, actually. <laughs> Maybe all you can do. Uh, in some cases, uh, you'll get a good strategy, but you may need to put that in another modeling system and work further on it to try to optimize it, try other kinds of speaker products. I've had to do that in some cases maybe uh, put it in focus, for example, and throw some line arrays at it to deal with some of those big open cavernous type conditions. Um, and then one question that comes up is, uh, what, what conditions can I look for to try to improve the STI? Well, if you can reduce noise, that'll help. If you can get rid of reverberation, that'll help. Those things hurt STI the most. You may not be able to control it, but you could use the software to demonstrate very quickly to an architect or an owner why they might want to put a little more fuzzy stuff someplace, like some insulation, uh, like on the ceiling, to bring down the reverberation times and help everybody. I mean, even sometimes just talking individually one to another can be difficult in these rooms, and improving the absorption would help everything. And there's plenty of ways to go with uh, how to model further as needed. There's a quick little reference chart on what can you do in other programs, and we support all of them. We're close uh, supporters of AFMG. We have special plugins that work in their software for some of the other products. So uh, we're all very familiar with how to work in all of these modeling environments. So depending on what you need to evaluate further, this is some good places to go. Okay. All right, so my last question for you is, uh, what are you gonna be working on? What, what's the future for, for you for, with Warehouse Designer? Uh, we keep saying Warehouse Designer, which is distribution centers, but I, I've already had users call me and say, hey, can I use this for a parking garage or transit station? And the answer is yes. Can I put this, can I put stuff in here for a factory? And the answer is, Absolutely, yes. Uh, so what other applications come to mind for you? That, that, and, and you can put that in the chat if you have a, an answer. Um, I think we're going to find there's a, a lot of places that we can use this uh, to quickly get to some answers, even if we just need a launching off point. All right. Should you need additional help? Did you have a question, Avery? Or? Oh, someone had an answer to that. Oh, okay. That's in a restaurant. Could you use it in a restaurant? Uh, you, you might tend to use address uh, or evac in a restaurant uh, because you're doing a grid of things aiming straight down. But if you're looking at it thinking, I don't want everything aiming all straight down, I mean, no reason why you couldn't try this. And, and you might put it in there and it comes back with a certain speaker model and you say, well, okay, I want the nicer ones. You can tell it I have a, a better budget. You can, you can adjust that. Um, I, I think convention centers are a place where you could use them. We have one near me that's basically a big steel building with divisible walls and certainly could use it in a place like that. I had someone use it recently for like a, uh, a pavilion where they sell uh, uh, agricultural supplies to uh, and, and, and groceries and, and um, fruit and vegetables and so forth. That was interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so if you need any other help on projects, uh, making sense of the software, finding your way through, you have a sales question. We have a bunch of people at. By Amp, who focus purely on loudspeaker solutions. So we have five people in applications engineering, three people in the sales department who specialize exactly in these types of projects. 
and uh, you can reach us this way. If you don't already know the tech support contact phone number, you can reach us there. Hit number two for loudspeakers. Um, community support at buyant.com gets to the whole team for technical questions. You can reach out to me and tell me what I should have said that was different today uh, or, or, or pose some really challenging question. Sometimes I get some very interesting questions that come from people in the field. It's, it's amazing some of the strange projects that come up. Yeah. Any other questions come up, Avery? Uh, it doesn't look like we have any. Okay. I think we're at time. If anybody else has uh, something they want to bring up, glad to address it. You can always reach us at uh, these, this phone number or, or email. It's on screen. And uh, thanks for coming. Really appreciate you making time in the middle of your busy day. I know it's hard to make time, put your tools down, and learn something like this. I hope it's a I hope it's a software package that lets you move quickly through these kinds of things and keeps you productive. And I know there's a lot of software to learn these days. I, I talk to people every day who are a little tired of the amount of software they have to learn. But I, I sure hope this one looks familiar enough from the other ones that we offer online that it's pretty quick uh, to adopt. If you run into any bugs or trouble, let us know.